So we're checking out the Tessin Smart Dimmer Switch. It looks much like the Martin Jerry Dimmer Switch. This is off center a little bit. It's gonna have the status lights on the right. You got your power button, you got your down dimming and your up dimming. It is a standard decor size, so you can make it fit in two gang, three gang, etc. different size face plates, such as this one here, this decorative one, it will fit without any problem. But they do give you a face plate in the box. It's a screwless one and snaps right on. It looks nice, no problem. But you do get the, also the screw holes in the top and the bottom for your regular Decora face plates. In the box, you get your instruction manual, which of course we don't need, and you get your screws and your wire nuts. So we did use the two-year convert process on this, and we're putting the fork of the DigiDim fork that I do for the Martin Jerry dimmers, which is very similar. So in the future, until you convert may not work, so you may have to solder to it. So let's take a look inside because that's what we do. So this model is much like the Martin Jerry one. It's the MJSD02. And actually you can see the FCC ID is the SD01. So probably it's going to be the same. 150 watts LED, 150 watts CFL, and we won't be doing incandescent. Yeah, and definitely you will need to make sure your bulbs are dimmable. Otherwise, you'll get some crazy blinking. Typical thing, you got your ground, you got your neutral, so you do need neutral in your box, and then you've got the power in, which is your live, and then the, of course the lights are your load, which is the brown wire. So inside, you see the familiar to you module, and actually it does even list as MJSD01. So if we did have to flash this the old way, if we didn't have to you convert, of course you would unplug this here and then you could solder to the pins here on the board. Or also I've seen people use little jumper wires in the small via holes. These little small breadboard jumpers, the little male ones, they work great for these little small via holes usually. And you can just stick them in here and they will stay in and make contact. So you could use these to flash this board if we had to do it manually. So you can see the heat sink along the side to dissipate the heat for during when you're doing dimming. And you can tell the ground just passes straight through to this metal piece that goes to in case you had on a metal box. So let's put it back together and we're gonna go to Tasmoto. So once you've done the flashing process or the two year convert process on this switch and you have Tasmoto up and you're looking at the configuration page as shown here. Next, what you'll need to do is we'll need to go download the fork for this dimmer. Now the reason for the fork is due to the different buttons this switch has along with the various scenarios of turning it on and off and along with the status lights I wasn't able to do everything in rules and I just wasn't happy with some of the response time and the various scenarios it would end up messing up on so I end up having to do a fork of Tasmodo to actually control this dimmer properly. So we'll leave a link in the description of the video for where to get this on GitHub. It is all open source. So you can see the various changes I've done to make this switch work. And as always, make sure and check the README because we may update this from time to time with the various instructions on how to install or do the different rules actually on the dimmer itself. So first, what we need to do is download the latest bin file from the bins folder here. The time of this video, it's a 6419 DigiDim V4. So we'll download this one. Then once you download it, you'll go into the configuration page or the dimmer. You'll go to firmware upgrade, and then you'll browse to the file you just downloaded. Once you have the file selected, hit start upgrade. Give it a little bit, it'll upload, and then it'll reboot once it's finished. Once it reboots, you should be able to notice in the information tab that it did flash the correct version. So once you've verified that, go back to the main menu, go to configuration, go to configure module, go to module type, all the way towards the bottom, you'll find the MJSD01 dimmer. Now this is the MJSD02, but of course we've shown it is the same dimmer actually. So we'll select that dimmer and hit save. So you need to go to configuration, configure MQTT, you need to put in your 
MQTT IP address, just typically your HASIO or Home Assistant. You put in your username of MQTT if you're using one, put in your password. And for the topic, you need to choose a unique topic that will be for this dimmer. We'll call it Dimmer Front Room. And we'll leave the full topic the same. And you'll click Save. At this point, let's check it out. Let's turn it on with the toggle. Light comes on. Let's try and dim it. So at this point, you won't be able to turn it on using the buttons on the front. So we need to go back to the GitHub page and we need to copy and paste in the rules that'll make these buttons function. So on the GitHub page, if you scroll down to the setup, you'll get this one line rule to copy in. Now, of course, always read in case this does change in the future and really does get updated. We'll copy this line out. Make sure you get all of it all the way to the very end. Copy in our clipboard, we'll go back to the switch, we'll go to console, and we'll paste it in here. Hit enter. Now, to make sure all the commands did go through properly, in case the switch does reboot, what you need to do is issue a switch mode 3 command as shown here. It should come back with a setting of 5. This will verify all the above backlog commands went through correctly. If you don't see the switch mode 3 set to 5, you can also break this up and do them one by one. Let's do switch mode 3 and enter. And you have switch mode 3, come back with a 5, so you know your commands are correct. So at this point, let's try the buttons on the front of the switch. So we got the on button, turns it on, and you can notice there's two LEDs lit up. And we'll push the up one. And you can see on the console, the rule is sending the dimmer plus and actually making the light brighter. And the LEDs on the side will show the status of the dimming. As you make it brighter, the more the green lights on the side will light up. And you can see on the console, we've gotten up to dimmer 100. Let's go down, all the way down, down to one. Now, if you long press the up button, it will jump automatically to 100. Now you can long press the down and it will jump to 20. Now if you'll notice in the rules, if you do a rule one, and you can change this by changing the rule, the switch to state three is the long press down. That sets it to 20. The switch state three of switch three, long press sets it to 100. Now, if you wanted to change these, you could. The easiest way to change this is to copy this entire rule without the quotes to your clipboard, type in rule one and paste it. Then come and change it to say dimmer 75 and then dimmer 35. If you wanted these as your favorites for long press up and long press down. Now let's give it a shot. Long press up, and you can see it jumps to dimmer 75. Long press down, and you can see it jumps to dimmer 35. Now a couple other optional rules you can do. If you want to do an, an action for the long press on or off to say turn on another light like we've done in some of our KU LED videos of doing this pseudo three ways, you can do that as well. Or you can have it drive other animations in Node Red or Home Assistant or whatever MQTT software you might be using. If that's all there is to set to the switch, let's go set it up in Home Assistant. So in Home Assistant, if we manually put in this light in, you'll go to your configuration YAML, or if you're using a split off of lights.yaml, you'll put it in there. If we go back to the GitHub page where we download the fork, if you scroll down, there's a sample configuration YAML code. It's a really simplified template based on the changes I did in the firmware. If you just simply copy and paste this into your YAML, Call it test and dimmer. You will need to make sure the topic name is the same. It is case sensitive. So we'll copy it straight from the console, the dimmer dash front room, and we'll change it in the state topic, change it to command topic, availability topic, the brightness topic, the brightness command topic, and that's it. File and save. We'll go into your home assistant GUI, go to general, 
do your check config make sure your configuration is valid and restart so once you've added it to your GUI you'll get the on and off plus the brightness and you will see it controls and changes the status lights on the front of the dimmer itself just like as you were controlling it and of course you get the off and the light LED turns red so that's all there is to it pretty simple just flash the fork go through and set up a few rules and throw it in the home assistant it's a great little dimmer I know some people didn't like the look of the Martin Jerry one that had that one toggle rocker along with the other rocker inside of it this gives you a little different look with three buttons without the rocker this dimmer setup is by far our, one of our favorites mainly because it has the additional actions for the long press the up and down and we can set the different favorites for the long press up and long press down we feel it's a very powerful setup in the various areas we have these dimmers one thing before you go if you remember from the very first video we did on this channel we covered a dimmer very similar to this with the capacitive touch panel where you slid your finger up and down well, they've come out with an updated version since then and I was able to use to you convert even on this newer model without any issues a couple big changes they've done that I'm glad they listened to everybody was if you remember from the previous video you could not do this so every single dimmer we've covered we've wanted to make sure we always show that it would fit in the core faceplate well this one fits and it has the holes for the regular screws they do include a faceplate but if you want to use it in your own you, you can without any modifications great also one thing they did they also upgraded the back of the switch as the big heat sink on the back to dissipate any heat they've also added vents at the top which is great as well this particular model does show it's a 400 watt incandescent along with 150 CFL and 150 LED much like you saw on the Tessin or the Martin Jerry dimmer you do configure this in Tasmodo as the Tuya dimmer but you do need to change the RX and TX pins to get it working correctly and I'll leave a link to the template in the description of the video on how to change this if you like this dimmer the one advantage this dimmer does have over say the Martin Jerry or the Tessin dimmer is you can quickly change the value of the dimming because you can just touch the top or you can just touch the bottom or touch the middle and it jumps to it but you will not get that action of being able to long press on the button because that's all handled by a secondary chip so there's the pros and cons to that so all in all it is a great dimmer we just kind of prefer this style dimmer but some people do like the look and the functionality of this one so go with one that fits you so that's it I know I just had several people always asking how to do the setup on the Martin Jerry dimmers and they also asked about this particular model so we wanted to make sure and cover it for everybody so thanks for watching if you're not a subscriber make sure and subscribe to us and catch our next video or live stream and hit that bell icon and make sure and share the video and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing here thanks and y'all take care